In this video, I'm going to be talking about Newton's first law, what it is, and how does it apply in these situations. Newton's first law is that an object will remain in its state of motion unless acted on by an unbalanced force, which is also known as the law of inertia. So before getting further into Newton's first law, let's talk about what inertia is. Inertia is the tendency of an object to remain in its state of motion. So it's a basically a property of all matter that describes how likely it is to keep on doing what it's doing. And because inertia doesn't specifically have a unit of its own, it is measured by the amount of mass that an object has. So when you see how much mass an object is composed of, that number in itself will tell you the tendency of an object to remain in its state of motion, and it is a direct relationship. So now going over here and getting into the details of Newton's first law, it's basically saying something is gonna stay at rest or be moving at a constant velocity, which means going exactly the same speed in the same direction, unless an external force or forces pushes or pulls and then creates an imbalance and then causes that object to accelerate. So to put it in simple terms, it's basically saying something is going to keep on doing what it's doing unless it gets pushed or pulled and then an imbalance causes it to accelerate. For example, if there's a rock floating along in space going at 10 meters per second, it's going to be going exactly 10 meters per second in a perfectly straight line unless it's affected by an outside force that causes it to accelerate. A lot of Newton's first law applications typically apply when there is something in some sort of container. So what I mean by that is a person in a car or even a brain inside of a human skull. So let's take a look at this car on the left side over here. So say for example, the person and the car system are moving forward at 30 miles per hour. And then it decides to take a right turn. So if you picture yourself sitting in a vehicle and it takes a sharp right turn, what happens? It feels like you're being pushed to the left. Well, you're not really being pushed to the left. It's just the entire car is moved to the right and gives you the feeling like your body is being pushed to the left and that your left shoulder might kind of lean against the door. But what you're actually doing, just like the car, is you're moving in a straight line at 30 miles per hour. Now, because you're not rigidly connected inside the car, when it turns, you continue in your state of motion, which is a constant velocity of 30 miles per hour in a straight line. So as you continue forward in a straight line, you see where the tip of that arrow ends up? It ends up on the left side of the car. And that's why you have that sensation of feeling pushed towards the left to the left side of the car. But really it's just you and your inertia keeping you in the same direction at 30 miles per hour as the car is turning to the right until you eventually kind of catch up with it and then continue in its state of motion. Another example is this example on the right, which is actually a very similar example, although it may not seem like it, it's when someone gets a concussion. So say for example, someone receives a lot of force on the front part of their skull. Now, because the brain isn't rigidly connected inside the skull, it's basically sitting there um, with a watery membrane around it. So if you get struck with a lot of force in the front of your skull, it's going to cause your skull to move and accelerate really, really quickly to the left. And what is everything doing initially? It is at rest. Okay. So because the brain is at rest, it has a tendency to stay at rest. So the brain is actually going to collide with the front of the skull because the skull moves to the left. And as the brain remains at rest, the front of the skull is basically bumping into the front of the brain. And what typically happens in a concussion is that the skull moves without the brain. It collides with the brain. And then that's where the first collision happens. And then the brain actually typically moves back and gets um, a little bit of trauma on the backside of it as well. Okay, so that's a case where 
the object, which is the brain, is trying to remain at rest and it has inertia. And then there's a lot of acceleration with the outer part, which is the skull. So as it moves to the left really, really quickly, it contacts the front of the brain, causing the first part of the concussion. So basically what Newton's law is, is a lot of different applications and examples where something is continuing in its state of motion, which could either be going at a constant velocity or being motionless, unless there's some kind of force that affects it. So in this first case over here, there might not be a force that affects it. So it moves at 10 meters per second in a straight line. And then in the case of the car and the concussion, the brain and the person remain in their state of motion as long as they can until their container their container being the car or the skull affects it and causes it to accelerate. So I hope that was helpful in helping you understand Newton's first law and how it applies to these situations. Thank you for watching and listening.